Hello, my name is Michael Lewis. I'm a literary agent in Los Angeles at the Shapiro Lichtman Agency. I have a very peculiar accent for many of you people because I'm actually English. I became a, an agent uh, after first qualifying as a lawyer, both in England and then in the state of California. And I gave that all up in order to become a literary agent because I love the written word. Um, writing scripts, television and film is a wonderful way to make a living when one is successful and it's also a very interesting business because it attracts the most innovative aggressive creative entrepreneurial individuals i think in the united states um, ways to break in and out of the business are really too numerous to mention and a lot of it uh, is based on dumb luck but ultimately at the end of the day if one believes in the written word then it's the written word that has to be something worth looking at so, when you're writing, it's most important, first of all, to remember that the best writing comes from one's own experiences, and that those experiences, if properly articulated on paper, really come through for the reader. Um, in television and film, one has to take a different examination. In film, there's the, the three-act uh, structure which is generally used. Unfortunately, we're sort of hidebound by that in Hollywood, whereas in sort of European films, uh, we often don't have to follow that system which makes them sometimes more interesting dramatically and with the characters and dialogue that they can use so with the three act uh, uh, drama or comedy in hollywood it's very important to follow that uh, paradigm so that the readers who are always the first obstacle in hollywood before anything can happen are used to what they're reading and the primary issue for the writer is really to hook into interesting characters because without an interesting character action can be great, the instructions to the director can be great, all the descriptions can be great. The character, who we learn about through the dialogue, that's the most important aspect. And that can only come from always keeping an ear open to conversations you hear around you so that you can uh, create a sort of data bank for yourselves so that when you create a character and you have a certain type of person in mind, you can think of all the different people you've listened to over a period of time and use that sort of dialogue in your story. That's the most important thing, is the dialogue. Uh, the second uh, item in, the, uh, in a screenplay is um, the action and the concept of the story. Um, this is something that you know, we go from the so-called high concept, like a sort of die-hard type of movie, to the so-called low concept, where you think of a family drama with multiple characters and you're really drawn to those characters. That's something that the writer has to choose which way to go and eventually with practice one sort of finds the type of story that one is most uh, comfortable with. Um, in terms of uh, television, television generally in, uh, in the one hour format for drama series uh, is a four act structure similar to screenplays but obviously the four act structure allowing for the commercial breaks and in sitcom it's a two hour, uh, sorry a two act structure. Uh, in the two-hour TV movie, they have a seven-act structure, again, allowing for all the commercial breaks. And again, the primary issue with all of uh, those types of scripts is the character. In whether it's a sitcom, because the comedy always grows out of the character and not the situation, or a drama where we learn about the dramatic episodes through the interaction of the characters who have to be interesting. And if, if you're interested in writing for television, then basically you have to, have, you have to watch a lot of television and study the characters of the shows and make notes and tape the shows and restudy them all the time and write down all your observations before trying your efforts at um, writing a script based on one of these shows. Now in terms of breaking into the business, once you finish schooling and learning as much as you can in school, there are various different ways to do it. I as an agent receive a lot of uh, solicited and unsolicited submissions of, of screenplays and television scripts, most of which I read except that I won't read any script, if it's a feature film script, after uh, page 10. I can tell within the first pen, uh, 10 pages, A, is the writer, does the writer have a talent? And B, are we immediately into the type of story that I th think, in my opinion, which isn't uh, infallible, of course, uh, if I think that this is a saleable property, because I'm in this business to make money, and C, 
uh, is the writer of sufficient quality in terms of the, uh, the content where I think this person could have a career. I'm not looking just to take one screenplay and try and sell it for a lot of money and then the writer disappears. That's just pure blind luck when that actually happens. In terms of television scripts, when I read those, I'm basically looking to see uh, if the writer has been able to watch a particular te television show. In one hour, for example, NYPD Blue is a good one to write these days. And in the half hour business, uh, a script for Frasier, for example. What we do is we read those scripts and if we think that the writer is uh, in the half hour A very funny and B catches the voices of all the characters then we're interested in pursuing further conversations with that writer and equally on the end on a one hour drama show like NYPD Blue A has the writer caught the voices of the characters and B has the writer created an interesting compelling story that is fully complete in the four act structure um, so I read a lot of material and I would, I would suggest that for every 100 scripts that I read I'm interested in taking on one client. Those are screenplay scripts. In terms of television scripts, for every 200 scripts I read, I'm interested in taking on one client. So as you can tell, it's first of all very difficult to get an agent, and secondly, from my point of view, it's very difficult to find good writers. Invariably, writers who I know who are friends who I don't represent, the more they write, the more I read, the more I see that they improve. But then again, I'm just a literary agent. I don't know how to write. If I knew, I would be doing it. Good luck. Hello, my name is Todd Kerner from the Kaplan Stoller Agency here in Beverly Hills. Uh, I'm from Northern Virginia originally, came out here about three years ago in 1991, went into the mailroom at United Talent Agency, uh, went through their training program, and about a year and a half ago became an agent here at Kaplan Stoller. We mainly specialize in television writers and directors, but we also have a few people who do some feature work. I wanted to talk to you today about uh, getting into this very, very crazy business. And what you're embarking upon is a very tough job. Getting in is really half the battle. Um, you have to really want this. And a big part of it is also being out here. At some point, if you're determined to be in the entertainment business, you're going to have to move to Los Angeles because this is really the heart of the whole industry. In terms of preparation, I think the most important thing I can tell you at this stage is to read and read as much as you can about the industry, uh, whether it's television or motion pictures, about the craft of screenwriting or television writing, and if it's at all possible, get a hold of a few scripts and read those scripts because that's what people use as the blueprint for their television shows or for their feature films. Watch as much TV and motion pictures as you can according to what your interests are. Know what you like, know what you don't like, and start to examine why it is that's the case. Is there something about the acting, something about the writing, something about the way the movie looks, which would be probably the directing? You want to really be able to identify what it is about a certain film or television show that makes you want to watch it and buy tickets. Take note of who the producers are. Take note of who the writers are, who the directors are, and also take note of who the studios are which studios are connected with which writers and producers and directors and notice which ones do the best work and which ones maybe don't do the best work and you'll start to identify some of the favorites that you have and that'll come into play later on in terms of your education when you get into college most people who end up here have majored in film or television studies criticism literature and writing but the most important thing about your college education is the education and experience of going to college, not so much the subject that you study. For example, here I am, a television agent, and I majored in aerospace engineering when I was an undergrad. So again, the subject itself is not really what's critical. I think what's most, mo most important is to be educated and get the experience of going to college and being around people who are passionate about studying further beyond high school. Also, when you're in college, you can study for internships and maybe spend a summer out here. Um, a lot of motion picture companies and even television companies will produce shows or movies on college campuses or in your neighborhood. And it's important that if you can't at all be connected with that production, you should, because once you're on a set, you sort of see how the industry really starts to work from the inside out. Finally, what you can do from college is get in touch with the alumni base that may be located out here in Los Angeles. 
uh, I, having gone to University of Virginia and to Duke, oftentimes get letters from students from those colleges and do whatever I can to help them out. Also, the alumni group has a club out here, and we uh, get together and talk about our uh, respective businesses, and a lot of times, most people are really involved in the entertainment business. In fact, you can't avoid it when you live in Los Angeles. Another important factor in succeeding in entertainment is to learn how to network. What you should start to do is, as you notice those writers, directors, and producers who you like and their work that you like, maybe f drop a letter to them. You can make the phone call, you can call up the studios, their numbers are listed uh, through information, and it'll eventually get to the person you want to talk to and say how much you enjoyed the writing of their movie or television show or the directing um, and let them know that you really are sincere about your interest and tell them what you want to be doing and it may be one percent it may be ten percent even fifty percent may end up writing back to you or calling you and saying listen I really liked your letter I wanted to let you know that this is a, a great thing to do and if I can help you out I will there really are a lot of nice people out here who are willing to help you out one thing you'll want to do is, of course, write query letters, particularly if you're a writer that has a script that you want to be seen by an agent or by a studio or by a producer. The query letters are always preferred to phone calls because phone calls sort of put people on the spot. But if they have something they can save and put on their desk, that's the best. Uh, as far as a query letter goes, you want it to be not too dry and professional sounding, but you also want it to be not too silly either. Oftentimes, I'll read a funny query letter that sort of makes me crack up, and that keeps my attention. But whenever you write a funny query letter, you have to be careful because it might sort of fall flat or actually turn people off. It's really risky. The best thing to do is just to find a style that's natural and works for you. Short paragraphs are best in the query letters. You don't want to go over one page, and you want to talk about yourself, and you want to talk about your script, and sort of use this letter and when you talk about the script entice them to read the script you don't want to give the whole story away in the query letter and you want to again catch their interest and make them pick up that script and start reading it um, it's a good idea to put a self-addressed stamped envelope in the query letter so that if they have a response that they can't get to it or it's not the right material for them if there's a st self-addressed stamped envelope, at least they'll be inc inclined to respond to you somehow in writing. Uh, and you also might want to try a follow-up phone call just to make sure they got the material. Uh, I have a lot of things here, and I tell people whenever I get material that I'm supposed to read, to please follow up every week or two weeks just to make sure I have not forgotten about it. And I will get to it eventually. But you have to understand, most of the people in Los Angeles have a ton of material to read. And you're project or material may not be top on their priority list, but if you keep on top of them without pestering them, they will get to it eventually with some luck. Um, I think the only thing I can tell you beyond that is what I look for when I'm talking to people who want to be writers or producers or directors. I look for honesty, sincerity, and most importantly, people who have a sense of passion for their project. You have to really love what you're doing and love what you're writing or directing or producing and that really makes people respond to you. Um, again, be gently persistent without being a, uh, a pest. Don't aggravate people by calling them too often. Um, be thorough. Know the subject you're writing about or talking about. Um, it, it really bothers me to see spelling mistakes in scripts or in letters, so make sure that all that stuff is covered. And with most computer programs today, they have spell checks, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, make sure your formatting is correct and that goes back to reading material about how to write a script you want to make sure the script looks right um, finally let's talk about length when you're writing a TV script if it's a sitcom you want it to be about 40 pages around there if you're writing a one-hour show you want it to be about 55 to 60 pages uh, if you're writing a screenplay generally between 110 and 120 pages all that will be cover covered in the books that you read about writing for television or motion pictures, but it's an important thing to pay attention to as well. Um, also, if you made other contacts through your networking that you think might be appropriate to mention in a letter, you should uh, talk about those contacts, because I always like to know who people have been talking to, because maybe I know them as well. Uh, finally, if you're writing in particular, 
you want to write for yourself and you want to write to impress executives, oftentimes I'll get television scripts and I'll read them and they're okay. And I'll tell people this is an okay script and they will argue with me, which is another thing you should not do. Uh, you have to remember that reading material is very subjective. And if one person doesn't like it, you just thank them for the read, see if they have any comments they can give you, and move on. But um, you don't want to write for a show and say, I, this is as good as anything I've ever seen on television or in the movies. Because those, they, they write 22 episodes a year of that. I want to find the script that will help sell you best to the executives that will hire you not the script that looks like every script I see on, uh, every week on a show. Um, and uh, it's a tough road to get into this business. And a lot of people never make it. But the most important thing is that you have to believe in yourself and that you can do it. Because if no one did, this would be a very empty town. So good luck and congratulations on uh, embarking on this uh, journey.